Four Midwest Guys presents Hello everybody and welcome back to The Race Is On and we are just days away from the big Oscar night itself who is going to win what could be the upsets, and are there going to be any surprises? Well, here I am again to go through all of the nominees and think about what I think is going to win. This is based on just some general consensus, based on a bunch of uh, guild and critic response, and just kind of like what the general atmosphere kind of feels like in Hollywood right now, based on a lot of uh, interviews and reports, and just kind of what's being campaigned right now, and what's what's currently sitting at the biggest right now. So we're gonna look at it kind of the way we did last time when I was predicting what was gonna get nominated. I'm gonna break it down by three episodes and just go category by category and give what I think is going to be the winner in each of them. So we're gonna start with best animated film. Now, it was a big shock when Frozen 2 didn't get nominated, but we're not gonna dwell on that because there really doesn't seem to be that clear of a winner right now. Toy Story 4 would seem like the easiest choice to win here, but I'm actually thinking when they announced that Klaus was the hidden win, you know, was the unexpected nominee of the bunch, everyone just kind of went, what was this movie? So I actually was interested to check it out, and I was incredibly impressed. And I think a lot of people that have actually stopped and watched the movie, they kind of had the same response too. It was a movie that nobody expected, and I think that's what got the nomination for it, and I think that could propel it to a win. I think Klaus is going to be your winner because it's not a sequel, and I just, I can't see Missing Link winning the Oscar for some reason. Like, they've... They've awarded stop motion in the past before, but Missing Link is just kind of uh, not that memorable of a film. You know, I just I don't I don't see it taking home the big award. Um, How to Train Your Dragon. I'm sorry, it's going to be 0 for three. The first time, the first time it actually lost to Toy Story three. Uh, the second time lost to Big Hero six. This time. It's a race between Toy Story 4 and Klaus, and I think I think Klaus is going to win it because Toy Story 4, uh, a lot of people liked it, but I think after letting it settle in as much as it did, a lot of people, you know, the, the general consensus is it wasn't as strongly regarded now as it was when it first debuted. So Klaus is my pick. I think Toy Story could sneak in, but I'm going to stick with Klaus for now. Best song we have, I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man, uh, Into the Unknown from Frozen 2, Stand Up from Harriet, I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough, and I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away from Toy Story 4. <sighs> um, I'm thinking that Rocket Man's gonna take it because up until the moment when the Golden Globes happened and both Elton John and Bernie Taupin got up to both accept their award together, uh, with the second they mentioned, that was the first time that either of them had won an award together or won a movie award together, that kind of set a little precedent. Like, even my wife, who doesn't normally talk about award films like this or think about these things, that kind of got the lineage people thinking about like the lineage like yeah this isn't this is the first time that Elton and Bernie could win together um, so yeah I think that's probably standing out at the forefront right now but there is another little inkling and I think right on its heels I think Cynthia Erivo could upset best song for Harriet for, uh, stand up from Harriet um, I don't know, I'm torn between the two. Um, I can't let you throw yourself away from Toy Story 4. Basically, you say the title, you've said the song. Um, <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, your basic Randy Newman song. There's not much to the lyrics at all. Um, I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough. 
I, I don't see them giving it to a, a faith-based movie. Despite the fact that I, I found it out after the nominations were released, the fact that uh, Diane Warren was the songwriter. So, again, she's going to go home empty-handed. She's going to be like, what, 0 for 9, 0 for 10 now? But uh, Into the Unknown, people like it, but it hasn't quite caught on to the lexicon that way that, uh, you know, uh, what was it? The way that Let It Go did. So, yeah. <sighs> Oh, I know I said I'm gonna love me again from Rocket Man. I'm thinking the Academy's gonna try to save face with all their Oscars so white and everything, the backlash that they got when they announced the nominations. This could be a chance for them to save faith or save it, save face and give it to uh, Stand Up from Harriet. So I'm gonna call Stand Up from Harriet. Though I'm like right on the edge with I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man. Best score. Um, you got Joker, 1917, Marriage Story, Little Women, and Rise of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Well, uh, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is not going to win. Uh, they wanted to nominate John Williams. Uh, John Williams, I mean, no matter what you thought of the movie, everybody will always say, John Williams did a fantastic score, and he really did. He deserves a nomination. Arguably, it's the best thing about the movie, so... But it's not strong enough to win here. Same with Little Women. Uh, Andre Desplat, he's constantly nominated every year for score. He's won twice. Uh, I don't see him winning for Little Women. Um, I'm doing the ums again a lot, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> So it brings us to 1917 and Marriage Story. We have Thomas Newman's score of 1917 versus Randy Newman's score from Marriage Story. Uh, Randy Newman's score was good. It may have been a bit too simple for most, but I think it actually worked the uh, emotional effect of Marriage Story. So I think you know, credit's got to be given to Randy Newman, but I don't see him winning here either. It's going to be between Thomas Newman for 1917 and... My God, I really need to learn this lady's name, Hildur, uh, whatever her last name is for Joker. Um, uh, this is tough. This is tough. Joker could win here. Joker's got a really strong chance of winning. It won uh, the Golden Globe. It also won the Broadcast Film Critics Awards, I believe. So, but it uh, two things here. It could also win because the Academy loves to nominate Thomas Newman, and he's never won before. And this is a man that has been consistently nominated since the Shawshank Redemption. The man's got nominations for American Beauty, for Wally, -E, for Skyfall, tons of nominations, tons of really strong chances each year. Sometimes it's been his nomination is the only nomination for the film, but I think he could pull off an upset. If 1917 is going to have as strong of a showing come Oscar night, as expected, then this could be one of the categories that they expected to win in as well. So, uh, Joker, 1917... I am going to say... I'm going to still say Joker for now. Because Joker... I don't know. I can't see them giving the most nominated movie of the year only one award, and we'll get to that award later. But for now, I'm gonna say Joker. Moving on to hair and makeup. We have Bombshell, Joker, Judy, uh, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> okay, so, uh, la 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 la. You know what, it's not even choice. I'm gonna say Bombshell. Because a lot of people are going to say, yeah, they did great wig work for the actresses. They made them have the hair of Megyn Kelly and all the other blondes from Fox News. But what they, what, especially one particular voter, which they had her uh, thought process of the category all <laughs> laid out there. Uh, what she forgets to mention is the fact that there is a lot of prosthetic work done on John Lithgow to make him look like Richard Ayers. So, or Roger Ayers, I'm sorry. Um, 
Yeah, John, uh, that, that prosthetic work is what's going to win. It's what helped Vice win last year, because the second the trailer for that dropped and people went, oh my god, that was Christian Bale, it's going to be the same thing. The people, when people look at Roger Ailes and Bombshell and realize, oh my god, that was John Lithgow, that's going to be more impressive than just the wigs. And the wigs are very impressive too, so let's, it's got both hair and makeup going for it, so Bombshell's your winner. Uh, if there's gonna be an upset, maybe Joker? I don't know. I might actually go with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as the, the upset there. So, that is my call for best hair and makeup is Bombshell. Which brings me to a very difficult one to predict, visual effects. So, uh, normally you'd think the most effects or the biggest effects are gonna win, but Avengers Endgame and Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, I think, actually have the smallest amount of chance of winning here. Uh, because when the Visual Effects Awards came out, Star Wars only got one, and it was like outstanding photorealistic environment generated. But what it lost all of the big ones to were The Lion King, which is also nominated. So it's going to come down to... This is a category that the Academy, if they're going to have a sweeper, they will have their visual effects winner come in here. We've seen it in, what was it, we've seen it in, uh, actually, that's the funny thing. If it wins visual effects, sometimes it won't win best picture, now that I come to think of it. Because the ones that did get nominated for visual effects and were nominated for Best Picture, didn't win Best Picture. Um, and I'll briefly run through it really quick. Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Avatar, Inception, Hugo, Life of Pi, Gravity, and hell, the, the 2015 nominees. You had Martian and Mad Max Fury Road and The Revenant all nominees, and they all lost to Ex Machina, which only got a screenplay nomination too. So, um... <clears throat> There's a three-way race here, I think. It could be Lion King, but that same team has already won for The Jungle Book, so it could come down to our Best Picture nominees of 1917 or The Irishman. Now, um, 1917 won the, the British Academy Awards for visual effects, and what I think what I think's gonna help that there is the fact that the effect that was created with that movie was the fact that it made it look one take, that it knew how to composite everything together, and it knew how to, like, create the simulated environments. There's, there's some small, subtle effects going on in 1917 that could help it, but I'm going to go for something slightly off, off prediction here. I'm actually going to pick The Irishman for best visual effects simply because there has been a lot of talk about the de-aging, whether or not you chastise Martin Scorsese for him referring to Marvel films as, uh, you know, as carnival pieces, as, you know, you know, as event films, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, you know, they also did pioneer a lot of de-aging process, which you couldn't have the Irishman if you didn't have the de-aging of the film. So the de-aging of the film, of all the characters in the film, that in and of itself, that could be what takes the award here. So I'm gonna say The Irishman for, you know, that's, that's what I'm expecting right now. That's what I think could win out here. And I'll give you my rationale a little later once we get to the end of the episode. So Irishman's gonna win, but watch out for 1917 and Lion King. All right, so that concludes part one of my prediction list, and stay tuned, and we will have part two shortly following.